Today we're in the middle of King's Cross, uh, planting with the residents of York Way Court, um, which is a residence group, and this is their community garden that they put together, and they've decided that they need fruit trees now. So we're going to plant uh, four apples, a pear tree, some vines as well, and two plum trees. Um, we plant here on small rootstock so that people don't get frightened of the roots going under their houses. Lots of orchards are planted and not all of them are looked after by a community group and some of the, sometimes they suffer, they don't get pruned and it's very important that they're in, uh, uh, in the first few years they're a little bit like children. They need a lot of care in the first three to four years, lots of water every summer and formative pruning to give them a good shape and the community group can do that and it's basically the more people you can involve in your orchard the better and there are lots of ways to do that. Events are the best ones, uh, free food, apple cakes, tea, um, invite people with posters, use the internet, don't be shy, stop, talk to people, tell them about your orchard or the orchard you're going to be planting. Work through schools and tenants and residents associations any kind of community group is perfect for an orchard and we provide orchard leader training for four to five members of each community group and then they go ahead and train more people so each of those ideally trains about six people in pruning, watering and well nobody needs uh, training in eating apples and pears. After I was volunteering as an orchard leader we uh, the estate where I live uh, up Caledonian Road in Barnsbury near Islington, we planted an orchard there and we chose to plant an orchard because allotments are quite a lot of work, they're about half an hour a day, whereas an orchard in its formative stage is about an hour's watering once a week in the summer and the pruning, so then you've got the lovely blossom, you've got the apples and so on, so we chose to plant five fruit trees and I just loved it so much. So the way that I got people interested in the orchard in the first place was a poster campaign. We set up a gardening group, so the Tenants and Residents Association, or TRA, became a gardening project, which involved even more people than were involved in the TRA. Um, we, uh, we spoke to everybody who overlooked the orchard, and we spoke to every, to get their permission, and we spoke to every single person on the estate. We door knocked. Um, so that was myself and another member of the TRA. And we were supported by the Housing Association as well where we live, so that was very helpful. And we got permission, we got a lot of support, we got some doubt. We had to, we had to tell people um, about the, the trees not growing too big and about they were worried about pests, so we explained that. In fact, we're going to eat all the apples, so it's fine. Um, and we got permission and we got a lot of support to do that. And on the day of the planting, it was great. We met people we've never met before and this is one of the points of an urban orchard. You get together with your community and uh, you know, make tea, plant trees, eat some apple cake and now I say hello to those people, I get to know them. The children know each other now, who, you know, we all say hello and it's great. Um, we're going to have some tea, we're going to plant some beautiful apple trees. We're going to involve different people with different abilities today because We've got uh, some light work, uh, like serving tea or um, digging uh, with small spades. And we've got some really nice heavy work. And we find that some people come out later who aren't that interested in planting apple trees are very keen to use big metal pole drivers and put on a hard hat. So that's a good way to involve all the community. Um, it's just really good fun. And then you have an orchard which will last forever, uh, well, about 70 years.